Chen Yuan murmured, but he also did not forget that even if he could deal with Wai Shaman Ku, there was still a greater danger. The one behind this assassination conspiracy was the mastermind who had spent $200 million to kill him. As long as this person was alive, the hunting would never stop. And so Chen Yuan began to shift from dealing with the assassin to planning to uncover the identity of the mastermind. For an ordinary person, finding the one behind it might be an impossible task. But for a top hacker like him, infiltrating the darknet was as easy as going to the market. He thought to himself, just wait there, you people behind the screen, I'm coming. This time Shen Yuan did not fight unarmed but had a supercomputer as his assistant. His computing power must have increased a hundredfold by now. No matter how strong the darknet's firewall was to Chen Yuan, it was just a dry twig that could be easily snapped. On the other side of the ocean, in a secret research facility, the world's top hackers stood frozen like statues as they watched the darknet system, which they proudly considered invulnerable, being infiltrated bit by bit. Until it became uncontrollable, the crowd's mouths were agape to the point where it seemed they were about to swallow the screen. This isn't good. Our firewall has been breached. Someone is taking control from behind. How is it happening so fast? The attack is crashing in like a tsunami. We can't hold it off. The backstage is out of control. There's no way to cut off the data stream. Someone suddenly explained, wait, which hacker is this skilled? Could it be the CIA? No way. The CIA attacked us just last month and we pushed them back. They don't have the capability to breach a darknet firewall like this. The darknet has existed for 15 years, having faced all sorts of attacks from top security networks, yet it remains standing strong like a monument. Even the CIA of the United States has grown frustrated at being unable to breach the firewall created by the world's best hacker, Mr. X. Quick, contact Mr. X immediately, report the emergency situation. The only way to stop this attack is to cut off the physical connection. Hurry up. No way. The data inside is too important. A heavy-handed cut could result in total loss. Who will take responsibility for that? What will we do after the data is destroyed? Do you guys have any brains? Mr. X still had responded. This was not good. While they were still struggling to think of a way, suddenly all the computer screens in the Seabird base displayed an extremely arrogant middle finger. Damn, this person is so arrogant. They dare to steal data and then taunt others. Unable to endure this humiliation, the hacker team leader angrily ordered, start the backup computer immediately. Deploy all satellites and trace the origin of the attack for me. The hackers immediately sprang into action, beginning to hunt down the hacker who had infiltrated their system. But as they tracked down, the result was only a fake IP. Shit, this hacker is really something like a ghost. Can't see them coming or going. Why is there suddenly such a strong hacker appearing in the world? Their skills must be on par, even surpassing Mr. X. While the other hackers were panicking like a disturbed nest of bees, Chen Yun on this side sighed with relief and muttered, almost revealed my real IP. Luckily, I used a high-end supercomputer. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been easy to win this time. After calming down, Chen Yuan smiled brightly, feeling truly comfortable this time. Who would have thought that my actions today might have been whispered about as legendary among hackers? Next time, I must buy a personal satellite right away. A hacker without a satellite cannot thrive. Just look at today, it took a lot of effort to win against them. On the side of the assassins, the darknet suddenly became inaccessible. For them, the inaccessibility of the darknet was normal as it periodically gets shut down by various governments and then comes back to life. Through source tracing, Chen Yuan finally identified the person behind the assassination. Well, Lolo found it. The mastermind is a guy named TTS who used an anonymous bank card to fund the bounty. He's also a longtime member, registered a full 10 years ago. The longtime member has posted three assassination missions, all targeting Hoaxina individuals. There's a high possibility that this person is also Hoaxina. It makes sense. I've never traveled abroad, so I don't have any enmities with anyone. This guy named DTS is likely to be close to me. A Hoaxina person who can spend that much money must certainly belong to the upper class. Chen Yuan continued to check for more information. Ah, previously he had hired an assassin to kill two people, one named Chang Jun and the other named Huang Chao. If I can investigate these two individuals, I can narrow down the mastermind. Continuing his search, Chen Yuan began to delve deeper into the information of the two targets who had been assassinated by the DTS in the past. He believed that by learning about Chang Jun and Huang Chao, he would be able to piece together the whole picture and discover who harbored such hatred towards him that they would spend a huge sum of money to have him killed. But just as he accessed the data vault, Chen Yuan couldn't help but exclaim, Holy shit, the darknet is like a black hole. Who can compete with this? It turned out that this website was not only a place for assassins to take on missions, but also an extremely detailed information gathering machine. 
Every assassin who registered an account on the Darknet thought their identity was absolutely secure, but in reality, it was entirely the opposite. This underground site secretly recorded every personal detail of each assassin, from their identity and activities to their transaction accounts. Damn it, the Darknet is truly an endless black hole. One side pretends to be secure while the other records everyone's identities in a repository. Not to mention the information of those masterminds who put up rewards was also completely exposed. Those anonymous accounts were just a joke. There was no way to stop the Darknet when they could reveal everything by locking the IP. Indeed, the Darknet is truly a black hole in every sense. After that, Chen Yuan continued to scroll through the information on Wai Sha Man Kui, the fifth-ranked assassin on the global leaderboard. Being particularly noted by the Darknet, a wealth of information about her had been collected. Wai Sha Man Kui had carried out more than 36 assassination missions and all the victims were men. The primary method of assassination was poison. After completing her missions, she always left a red rose on the victim's corpse, which is why she was named Wai Sha Man Kui. It may sound simple, but her targets were all dangerous individuals from the leader of Sakura in Futang, the mafia gang in Italy, to politicians and wealthy elites. All of them were not ordinary people, yet they all fell to her hands. Of course, these cases were never reported due to the significant consequences. The clever way to handle it was to act as if nothing had happened. Only those involved in this game understood just how dangerous she was. And now, I was her 37th target. Even more interestingly, Chen Yuan discovered that the personal information of Wai Sha Man Kui and other top assassins had been erased. Chen Yuan muttered, What is there to hide? These people must not be lone assassins. They must have a large organization backing them. Chen Yuan realized that it was the financial organizations and corporations behind these assassins that helped them remain undetected and continue to exist in the underground world. Therefore, information about them was kept hidden and tightly protected. In the end, Chen Yuan concluded, it turns out that without a major organization backing you, don't even dream of making it to the top 10 assassins. Assassins like Wai Sha Man Kua have a whole support system behind them, helping her not only to carry out missions, but also to conceal her identity thoroughly. The Darknet, acting as an underground marketplace, seems to be so fearful of these organizations that the information about top assassins is completely concealed. Therefore, the Darknet is not merely a marketplace for assassins, but also a part of the power network among financial organizations and underground forces. And these organizations not only support the assassins, but may also negotiate with the Darknet as well. While Chen Yuan was immersed in researching and analyzing extremely important data related to the Darknet, the door suddenly swung open. Wai Mang Mang entered, holding a plate of sliced apples. Brother, I just finished slicing the apple. Do you want some? Chen Yuan was taken by surprise, quickly closed the database, and felt a little relieved that he had managed to do so in time. Wai Mang Mang walked over and glanced at the computer screen. This situation was really strange. Her mind started racing with a lot of questions. Brother, what are you watching? Chen Yuan appeared flustered. Nothing. I'm not watching anything. But his face told everything. Immediately, Wai Mang Mang concluded that Chen Yuan was watching something inappropriate, and she felt embarrassed. Her cheeks flushed. Oh my god! You, you, are secretly watching this. Typical of boys always watching improper stuff. How embarrassing. Chen Yuan hurriedly explained, Meng Meng, let me explain, it's not what you think. But before Chen Yuan could finish his explanation, Wang Meng Meng blushed and rushed out of the room, not forgetting to leave a remark. I don't want to hear anything. You are truly an evil man. Shang so embarrassed. And her mind, her thoughts about Chen Yuan, the strong, handsome, and intelligent older brother, her ideal image seemed to have completely collapsed. Before Chen Yuan could catch his breath, Zheng Chai Lu rushed into the room with a curious expression. Chen Yuan seriously asked, Chai Lu, why are you here too? Zheng Zhe Lu's face instantly turned into an embarrassed expression similar to Wang Meng Meng's earlier. Feeling shy, she began to tease, Oh my, Chen Yuan, you are so annoying. Hiding in your room, watching adult movies, huh? How embarrassing. Chen Yuan hurriedly explained, Chai Lu, you guys misunderstood. I was just looking for important information earlier, not what you think. Zhang Zhe Lu winked, grinning mischievously, and added, You're a billionaire. You can have anything you want. Why sneak around like this? But I must say, watching those short films looks cute. Next time you watch this secretly, remember to invite me along. As Shen Yuan was about to continue explaining, Zhang Zhe Lu cut him off. Ah, I get it. Men sometimes have their needs, but remember to stay healthy, Chen Yuan. After saying this, she quickly shoved a roll of paper into Chen Yuan's hand, her face as red as a tomato, and then dashed out like a gust of wind. The whole situation happened so quickly that Chen Yuan stood there in a daze, finally shouting in despair. Tan, why did you give me this roll of paper when I don't need it? 
Jiangzai Lu come back here. The roll of paper in his hand at a glance revealed its deeper meaning. But unexpectedly, right before running out of the room, Jiangzai Lu added a cryptic remark. Chen Yuan, come to room 6 at midnight tonight. Meng Meng and I are not sleeping together today. I have to go back to Ma Duo tomorrow. I want to talk to you a bit before I leave. Chen Yuan was left dumbfounded, eyes wide open, his mind in a daze. What now? Jai Lu, what are you planning this time? You want to talk but wait until midnight to do it? What kind of game is this? The more he thought, the faster his heart began to race, a mix of shortness of breath and nervousness overwhelming him. Instead of schemes and hacking plans, he suddenly felt as if he were falling into a whirlpool of mixed emotions, unsure of how to handle the situation. On the other side of the globe, Mr. X was in an emergency meeting. On the screen were financial tycoons and other important figures. The meeting took on a sci-fi quality. With three-dimensional projections like in movies, there was no need to be present in person. They could hold meetings from home. During the meeting, Mr. X assured the tycoons that he would quickly identify the person behind the Darknet attack and ensure that all confidential information remained secure. The condition was to catch the hacker before things escalated any further. The meeting quickly came to an end, but even during the meeting, Mr. X remained discreet with his mysterious mask. No one knew what he looked like maintaining his enigmatic style until death. After analyzing the way the hacker attacked, Mr. X realized that this person was not an employee of national security agencies. This was likely a freelance hacker, but this person's skills were very high. But why, after the mission was reported as a failure, did the account of Venomous Snake log into the darknet at 9pm in Hoaxia? This is too strange, and investigation must be conducted immediately. Check if the five members of Venomous Snake are still alive. If they are dead, it is very likely that their accounts have been stolen by someone. A hoarse voice spoke up. Let me take care of this. Then a shadow appeared in the wooden house on the small island. After that, the shadow quietly vanished into the darkness. Few would suspect that the shadow was actually Endless Apocalypse, the number one assassin globally, also known as the King of Assassins, the very person whose name makes even major crime lords tremble. This is someone who can eliminate anyone without leaving a trace, perfectly embodying the phrase, gone without a trace. Who would have guessed that Endless Apocalypse was actually Mr. X's personal bodyguard? Mr. X's deduction was entirely correct. It was just unfortunate that Chen Yuan had inadvertently made a small mistake. But this mistake is usually overlooked. Who would pay attention to the login times of an assassin on the darknet? One morning like any other, when the sky had not yet fully brightened, Chen Yuan stepped outside, feeling the gentle chill of the early morning air. He stretched, feeling his body lighter and more graceful than ever before. Unexpectedly, just as he stepped out the door, he collided with Yi Han. Yi Han offered a gentle smile, though with a hint of curiosity. Oh, Mr. Chen, you're also up early. Morning exercise. Chen Yuan glanced over. This young lady was wearing a tight-fitting sports outfit, looking both energetic and attractive, perfectly embodying the goddess style. Without thinking much, he nodded. That's right, Mrs. Yi. Are you in exercise too? Yi Han seized the opportunity. Then why don't we run together? Chen Yuan wanted to refuse, but couldn't, so he happily agreed. Sure, running together would be more fun. So the two of them stepped out of the villa together. The air was still cool around 5 a.m. and the sky was still in a sleepy haze. As they began running along the roadside, Yi Han suddenly spoke up, her eyes full of curiosity. Mr. Chen, recently I've been trying to meditate, seeking some sense of the spiritual energy of heaven and earth, but I still haven't felt anything. Do you think there really is something called spiritual energy or the idea of cultivating immortality in this world? Yi Han continued, her tone becoming increasingly serious. I have read countless documents, all of which only prove that these things are nothing but novels, ancient myths. Mr. Chen, right now it's just the two of us. Can you honestly tell me? Upon hearing Yi Han's question, Chen Yuan calmly asked in return, Don't you believe me? Yi Han was even more emphatic, declaring firmly, I don't believe it, Mr. Chen. I am a person of science. I am more rational than Ms. Wu Shuang. Therefore, I cannot believe that there are people who can cultivate immortality unless you can prove it to me or make me feel the so-called spiritual energy. If not, don't expect me to believe in these groundless stories. Upon hearing this, Chen Yuan could no longer hold back and replied, All right, you want to feel the spiritual energy. I'm not a narrow-minded person. I will let you taste this flavor. With that, Chen Yuan gently raised his hand above Yi Han's head. A second later, a table of data appeared in Chen Yuan's mind. Name, Yi Han. Appearance, 9.7, beautiful like a fairy. Figure, 9.5, body is stunning. Health, 6.9, a bit weak. Picky eater, low resistance. Remaining enhancement points, 130. 
Enhancing subject Yi Han consumes 10 points. Would you like to enhance? Chen Yunan looked at the information appearing before him and couldn't help but chuckle inwardly, though he didn't show any emotion. So this young lady is a picky eater and has weak health. Well, I might as well give her a bit of enhancement so she knows who she's dealing with. System, enhance me. As the thought finished, a stream of energy began to spread from Chen Yuan's hand over Yi Han's head, filling her entire body. She felt as if her body had been reborn, experiencing a sensation of comfort never felt before. For the first time in her life, this self-confident and proud young lady was completely taken aback. Is there really such a thing as spiritual energy? Can it truly allow someone to feel such wonders? She gazed at Chen Yuan in confusion, her eyes filled with astonishment and fear. Yi Han had never thought she could actually harness spiritual energy like this. Shocked to the core, who would believe it? All her doubts vanished completely, leaving only a steadfast belief in her heart. Name, Yi Han. Beauty, 9.8, a goddess with an unblemished figure. Figure, 9.6, perfect without any adjustments. Health, 9.5, as strong as a superhero. Remaining enhancement points, 120. The feeling of transformation is not just a phrase to describe, but a real experience. In just a few fleeting seconds, Yi Han's beauty was elevated to a new height. If she was previously a hot girl with a beauty score of 9.7, now she resembled a celestial fairy descending into the moral realm. Every curve on her body seemed sculpted, her skin as smooth and white as a freshly peeled egg, and her entire being radiated as if it had just been upgraded to the highest version. Even the smallest movements like a frown or a smile were enough to leave others breathless. Chen Yuan had seen all kinds of beauties, and he couldn't help but be stunned for exactly two seconds. But if Chen Yuan froze for two seconds, Yi Han was dazed for ten seconds while looking at Chen Yuan. In that moment, she suddenly felt a wave of admiration rise within her. This was no ordinary person. He truly was a celestial being. He exemplified mystery, with skills and knowledge entirely different from an ordinary person. And indeed, he was really handsome. After delivering an impressive performance, Chen Yuan smirked, one hand resting behind his back, his gaze absentmindedly fixed on Yi Han, embodying the essence of a celestial being. Do you believe now? Yi Han hurriedly nodded like a chicken pecking at rice. I believe. This time I really do. At that moment, she marked a significant change in her heart, transforming from doubt to absolute trust. At the same time, Yi Han's favorite level for Chen Yuan skyrocketed by 10 points, reaching a total of 70. A clear sign that this girl had started to develop feelings for Shen Yuan, and with her current favorite level, falling in love was inevitable. Chen Yuan, after hearing that, not only breathed a sigh of relief, but also appeared as if he was an enigmatic character, always contemplating grand matters beyond the reach of ordinary people. But once on stage, one must perform their role perfectly. Chen Yuan immediately switched to outstanding actor mode, raising his hand to his mouth, beginning to cough violently, his whole body swaying as if he were about to collapse. Yi Han hurriedly supported Chen Yuan, worriedly asking, What's wrong with you? Why do you look so weak? Chen Yuan weakly replied, It's nothing. Just to help you feel the spiritual energy, I have to use my true origin. You might feel it for just a moment, but in reality, I have lost 10 years of cultivation. This statement left Yi Han stunned. She hadn't expected that her actions had cost Chen Yuan so much. Still not done, Chen Yuan continued his deep acting. He became noticeably weaker, barely able to breathe, and then suddenly collapsed into Yi Han's arms. Truly, a master cannot compete with seizing the opportunity. But still, he spoke with an extremely feeble demeanor. Wait, your body has never been in good shape, probably due to years of picky eating and anxiety. Your body has been lacking vitality since childhood. You must have taken a lot of medicine, right? That's why you have to exercise to maintain your health, right? Now it's okay. My 10 years will definitely help you regain your health. Ha! Huh. Changing the laws of heaven is a serious sin. Yi Han began to deeply reflect on the sacrifice Shen Yuan had made for her.